this is practically pornographic this man literally killed somebody for funsies i have it tattooed on my body and have not read it oh my god hey guys welcome or welcome back to another video today we are gonna be talking about the 26 it was supposed to be 25 but last minute i remember something else so 26 big brain books that i want to read before i kick the bucket bite the dust perish whatever you want to call it before i die i want to read these books not in the near future this is not in my immediate tbr because these are like i said what i like to call big brain books and they actually require me to think while i'm reading considering that i mostly read before going to bed i don't normally like to think when i'm reading so let's get started the first book is actually the book that inspired this list and it's also the book that i'm going to be taking off this tbr soon fingers crossed and it is war and peace by leo tolstoy look at her it's so floppy for paperback lovers this is practically pornographic a lot of people have dubbed this book as the greatest novel of all time i will be the judge of that if i agree or not so far though i am really enjoying it i love this translation by anthony briggs but this book i've actually wanted to read since i was seven years old do you guys remember the sweet life i had the biggest crush on this faustins when i was a kid i don't know why this stuck with me but there was one episode where cody martin he actually mentioned this book i don't even remember what he said about it but he mentioned it if cody loves it i love it therefore i'm gonna read it so um, seven year olds me made a promise to myself that i will read war and peace and listen i am fulfilling that promise that i made to myself and then the next book on my list is anna karenina also by tolstoy the premise of anna karenina is actually a lot more interesting to me than war and peace but war and peace is just more of a priority to me that's why i went with it first but before i pick that up i would probably sooner pick up anna k by jenny lee which is the retelling of it that one sounds so interesting to me because First of all, Anna Karenina retelling. It gives off Crazy Rich Asian vibes and I loved Crazy Rich Asians. And the next book on my list is probably the most ridiculous book on here and it's In Search of Lost Time. This book, if you have never heard of it, is over 4,000 pages long. You heard me right, over 4,000 pages long. But it also has like a 4.3 something stars on Goodreads. There's so many people that are giving this book five freaking stars, even if it's over 4,000 pages. I think depending on the edition that you read or the translation that you read, it's split up in either six or seven volumes. You know, maybe slowly throughout the years, I'm gonna pick up one volume until I've read the entire novel. I don't know if that'll work out. This is definitely the most intimidating book on here just because the sheer size and then the next two books are both by dostoevsky the first one is crime and punishment i actually used to have a really beautiful leather bound copy of it that i have no idea what happened to it i bought this in high school and i tried reading it then but i just i don't remember if i couldn't get into it or if i just did not have the time if you have never heard of crime and punishment it follows this man called i think his name was raskolnikov but this man literally killed somebody for funsies he murdered somebody for funsies and he did not give zero fucks absolutely no remorse whatsoever then slowly over time as we follow his story we start seeing guilt eating him alive very slowly but surely until it has completely consumed him that just sounds like a good fun old time to me and then brothers karamazov is the next dostoevsky that i want to read and this one is a murder mystery that i believe most of the book is set in the courtroom i think there's also a lot of like romantic drama involved with this i don't know but it sounds like a fun old time then the next book is the divine comedy by dante alighieri this i added to my tbr in high school when my english teacher told me about it the way he described it to me sounded super interesting even if he did say that it was kind of a very dry piece of literature i just find any story with biblical elements in it very fascinating although i'm not religious myself i consider myself more of an agnostic i did go to catholic school and i was raised in a very 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 catholic household my entire family's pretty devout speaking of it's actually lent season so for all the catholics out there happy lent i don't know do you even say happy lent clearly i was always a very not so great catholic but i just find a lot of stories with biblical elements and it's super fascinating i feel like it just shows a different perspective of the bible but if you're not familiar with the divine comedy it's split up into three parts the first part is inferno which is when dante goes into hell aka inferno the second part is purgatorio which is when he gets out of hell and goes into purgatory 
and then the third part is called Paradiso which is when he finally makes his way up to heaven and then kind of on that same biblical note I also want to read Paradise Lost by John Milton this book has a lot of very religious undertones because it is literally about the war between God and Lucifer himself and then the next book if you don't know what that is that is from the Les Mis musical I'm not super big into musicals Les Mis is my favorite that I've ever seen I've seen it a couple of times and I love it every single time I love all of the songs the story is wonderful the production it's so good since I love it so much I feel like it's only appropriate for me to go to the source material one day and read the book that it's based off of which is over a thousand pages long translated it's a little scary it's a lot scary I don't know how much my knowledge of the musical will help me get through the book and then the next one this is another French Revolution story and it is The Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens I have only ever read one Dickens novel and it is A Christmas Carol the one with Scrooge that's the only Dickens book I've ever read I feel like I need to read more than one Dickens book in my life and then the next book is The Count of Monte Cristo I don't know why every time people talk about this book it reminds me of the national treasure and the national treasure low-key is life <laughs> I know a lot of people hate that movie a lot of people just hate Nicolas Cage in general but I found National Treasure movies so fun and entertaining and The Count of Monte Cristo sounds like that and this is also a wrongful imprisonment story and I think it would be really interesting to read about something that is still happening today something that is still very relevant and it's still a problem today from the perspective of people from whenever the hell this book was written and then the next book is Don Quixote by Cervantes this freaking book I don't know too much about the story of Don Quixote so if anybody who's read this book let me know if this assessment is correct but every single time people have told me about this book it reminds me of Zorro, Monty Python, and Princess Bride that is the vibe that it gives me I don't know if that's correct but I love those three things I want to get all of those vibes together these next two books are both by Homer and it's the Iliad and the Odyssey I love Greek mythology I have read about the Greek mythology from every other source except for the OG and then the next book i'm not sure it's from the same time period but it's also from a very long time ago and it's enid by virgil am i saying that right enid 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm uncultured. I just, I need to read it. I literally have a tattoo right here of a quote from Enid. I have not read the fucking book. I have it tattooed on my body and have not read it. That's awesome. To be fair, I have it tattooed on my body because of the mortal instruments, but still, the source of the quote is Enid. And then the next book is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. I don't know why this book is on this list. This is like not even 300 pages long, so technically it shouldn't be that difficult to read, but the subject matter is kind of scary it's literally about war tactics what's unique about it is that a lot of the stuff that's written in this book is still used today in war tactics and in politics and that just intrigues me but also the fact that it's that important is partially what scares me from reading it and then the next book is the republic by plato i have not read anything by plato i read a couple of aristotle's work it's kind of weird i feel like i should have read plato before aristotle and the next is also by another i don't even know if you can call him a philosopher but i guess he technically was a philosopher and it is the prince by Niccolò machiavelli now listen <laughs> machiavelli is such an interesting person but for my first english class that i took freshman year of college i had to read a little excerpt from the prince and then write a paper on that and what I read really intrigued me because it was a lot it was pretty extreme views I've just always wanted to read more from that piece of work just to try to see where his head's at and where he's coming from a lot of people think he's like the most evil man to ever exist other than Hitler a lot of people have said that to me and then the next book is the Arabian Nights or 1001 Nights because I've read a couple of retellings of this and I've loved pretty much every single one of them and also one of the stories here is literally Aladdin and the Lamp aka what the Disney movie is based off of and I loved Aladdin. If you guys are not familiar with this by the way they're just a bunch of Arabian folk tales. They're the 1001 stories that Sherazad told her evil husband so he wouldn't kill her and she is such a girl boss for that. The next book another Dickens and it's The Great Expectations. A lot of people have said that this is his greatest novel is Magnus Opus since Dickens is one of the most beloved authors to ever author. I feel like I need to read his best work ever at least once in my life 
And then the next book, I don't know if you could consider this a classic. I loved the movie adaptation of this. It was so good. It's a very long movie, which makes sense because the book is also very long. It's like over a thousand pages long and it is Gone with the Wind. And again, I feel like on the same page as Les Mis, I want to actually read the book one day, but it's so long. And then the next one, this one mostly intimidates me because of how long the book is and how long the sequels are of the book. I also saw the TV show adaptation of this and absolutely loved it and it's Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. I've heard so many people say that they absolutely loved the TV show but they love the books even more. I feel like a lot of people say that about books anyway. I'm sorry. What is happening? Are you okay? <laughs> oh my god. There's another dog knocking. You good? Are you okay? Are you okay? Give me paw. Thank you. What was I? Okay, I was talking about Outlander. I want to pick these up one day. It's just so long and it's such a commitment and there's just so many other things that I would much rather read before this since I've already seen the TV show. <laughs> and the next book is pretty much the same case and it's the Game of Thrones books. Absolutely loved the Game of Thrones TV show. It is probably my favorite fantasy TV show of all time, but these books are so long. They're so thick and the fonts and I think the last book isn't even out. So maybe I'll wait until George R.R. R. Martin actually decides to finish the books. The next one I feel like you can guess. It's The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. When I was seven years old, my dad got me a PSP. And one of the games that he got me was a Lord of the Rings game. I don't know why. I don't think I had ever seen the movie. I don't think I even knew what Lord of the Rings was. But he got me that game. And I freaking loved it. Of all of the games that I had for the PSP, that was the game that I played the most. And the game that I loved the most. I was obsessed with that game. Was it appropriate for a seven year old? Absolutely not, but I loved it. I don't think I saw all the movies until I was like 10 Which by the way, I don't think it was age appropriate for a 10 year old to watch those movies But I love them anyway, but I also want to read the books one day I tried reading The Hobbit in high school and man the writing was really difficult for me It just was not agreeing with me I don't know what it was and I'm not the only person who feels this way I've heard actually so many people say that the writing in the Lord of the Rings books is not the best Which is a shame because the story is so good. At least the movie adaptations were great. And then the next book is House of Leaves by... I forget the author, Daniel Mark? I think his name is Mark Daniel. Danielewski? Mark Danielewski. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Zoomies. I don't know what's going on. So many people say that House of Leaves is the scariest book they have ever read. And oh my god. <laughs> what's going on? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, House of Leaves, scariest book some people have ever read. I picked it up in high school. Actually, I think I closed it after I opened it because it was scary, but not because the story was scary because I don't think I even read a page. The formatting was really scary. If you've never seen this book, there's like writings all over the margins. It's weird. There's pages that are like all messed up. I don't know how you're supposed to read it and I just don't want to take the time to learn how you're supposed to read this book right now. But one day I will right now no. And the last book on my list is 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. I want to read other Haruki Murakami books but 1Q84 is probably the one that I am most interested in but it also really really scares me because it's sci-fi fantasy vibe and sci-fi already scares me as it is. The fact that this is a Murakami scares me even more. I don't know why but whenever there's authors that so many people absolutely adore I get so scared of reading their books and people love Haruki Murakami for so many reasons and I I want to know what that is firsthand. It's not right now, not in the near future. So of all of these books, other than War and Peace, which I'm already reading, I think the book that I'm most likely to pick up soon, it's probably The Count of Monte Cristo. I'm already imagining Nicolas Cage's face. I will definitely let you guys know if I pick up one of these bucket list books next. That is everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment down below what books that you really really want to read but you're also so scared to read at the same time. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below and also hit the subscribe button while you're down there and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye! Life goes up and it goes down I know my mom taught me that I figured why we fool around so little and we keep track